If you're interested in AI art, it might be a good time to increase your programming skills. So we're going to just do some programming with AI art. So we'll start with some scripting. In particular, I really wanted to go over background removal and then also uh, clothing segmentation. So you can actually separate out like the tops and bottoms of people's clothing and have those as masks that you can use in inpainting later. Finally, I wanted to do some stuff with the auto 111 API because it is a very powerful API that allows you to do like network stuff and things that are really advanced fairly fairly easily. And yeah, I, I don't think I've seen very many tutorials on it. So we're going to go with that as well. So scripting is basically the idea of having a list of instructions that you're giving a computer and just making it run through all those instructions. Today, what we're going to be doing is image scripting. So that means that we have a lot of similarities between all of our scripts. And so they're going to follow a very similar process of having a bunch of imports at the top. We are going to write some parsers. You don't need parsers, but they allow you to really easily change variables from the command line. So we have imports, parsers, and then we are going to have a loading statement that kind of loads up all of the files that we're going to need and then we're going to run through all the files and that's going to have a very similar process where you're loading the files we're doing something to the files and then we're saving the files now all the scripts today are going to use this similar process the OpenCV contour tool picks up any sort of contour so a path that has a similar color and intensity the actual image and it will highlight that and then you can do things where you can fill it in or you can highlight it and it's really good for kind of getting out really distinct parts of an image so if you in particular if you're using image to image and you have a black background and you are keeping that black background it's really good at cutting out those things so I was using it a bunch with the nerf project that I was working on earlier um, and it's really useful for cutting out weird objects that have very distinct backgrounds where the background is just a solid color Media pipe is another thing that has a bunch of useful tools in it as well. These tools are like weirdly, even though they're only like two or three years old, they're still a lot older than some of the other methods out there right now. You can do uh, people isolation. So you can create a mask for people and not people. And um, that's pretty good at separating out those two. Media pipe is also a real time library, which means most of the programs that it runs run at like 60 frames per second or like around there, which means that it's really exciting with this new thing that's coming out in the next few weeks, apparently, which is distilled diffusion. And that's supposed to get up to about 30 uh, frames per second so if you're using a slower computer it might be like 10 frames per second but it's still like this is a really high speed that you should be able to use with some of these media pipe tools in order to create like a, a rendering pipeline with sta stable diffusion which is like things are going to get crazy really quickly that's another reason why it might be worthwhile understanding media pipe in a lot more detail because it might be what is very important in the coming months <laughs> A very recent and very helpful library is RemBG. And so that allows you to remove the background and it uses neural networks and all that mechanisms to do it. So it's really good at just cutting out the prime object in an image. And it kind of decides what the prime object is for itself. And it usually is really good at picking out people or picking out cars. Uh, sometimes it picks out more narrow cut than you would like, uh, but it is really helpful at kind of isolating an object and bringing it to the forefront. And one of the really cool features that it has is it has the ability to cut out clothing and in particular you can cut out the top and bottom of clothing and that means that we can actually make masks with those and then we can use those masks in image to image to change someone's clothing or to change the person wearing the clothing you can kind of isolate the clothing from the person and you could do this before but like it just took a lot of time whereas like with this it's like you can just run it through a network get the like top or bottom that the person is wearing and then just like flip it to jeans or flip it to like a leather jacket or something so it's really helpful to be able to just kind of flip out parts of an image and in particular like, there's a lot of times where you have something where there's like a really great outfit but the person wearing it has some like weird arms or hands or like that's something that comes up a lot in AI art and so it's like really helpful to be able to switch out the model with the same outfit. One really powerful thing that I haven't heard a lot about is the use of auto 111 as an API. So if you start it up with this API tag it'll actually accept post requests. You can send images across network and it'll like if you set all your network stuff up correctly uh, it'll listen for those network requests and you can like do processing that way. In particular it's really helpful for having some sort of loop over Python code. It's really easy to send requests in Python and then you can get the response back and uh, do some extra processing on it. So it's, it links up really nicely with the rest of your code. And so this is basically a simple example where we have something where we're opening the file, we're encoding it in base 64. So that's the encoding method that this API uses. And then you're sending it to the API. Um, in particular, you have to make sure that it's as a list, uh, but this is basically like the request type method that it looks like. You can load the JSON and then open up the image 
and save it. And so this is a way that you can really easily start creating pretty powerful scripts with uh, just using the API. <laughs> and um, in particular, I found this really useful for uh, in painting masking. So that's something that uh, I don't know, there might be a good plugin for, but I haven't seen uh, auto 111 can do batch masking, but it doesn't seem to have it in built. So maybe there's a library for that or something, but you can also just use this API. And so in Python images tend to be considered rank three tensors. So height, width, and color space. And then sometimes the height and width are mixed up depending on the, you have to be a little bit careful with that one. But um, for the most part, it's height, width. And so that allows you to be able to access any pixel information. So you can go like X, Y, and then your color. So like RGB. And that's usually how these things are processed. There's a few really helpful concepts when it comes to using these tensors. And one of them is Boolean masking. Uh, so in the same way that masking works with like in stable diffusion, you can actually create array masks in Python. And so you can do that by saying like, oh, if where this array is greater than five, it'll give you out a Boolean mask. So that will be an array that's the same shape, but it'll be true or false depending on whether the condition is true or not. And you can start linking these up with bitwise ors and bitwise ands and start creating some logic maps really quickly and really efficiently because this is also done in with C++. So it ends up being a lot faster than if you do it in raw Python. So then you can use these Boolean masks and you can start accessing values from your arrays and start setting those to things. So in particular, a lot of these algorithms that we're looking at, they'll just cut out the image that is the main image. But if we want to actually create a mask, we have to push all of the those values to be like white or to be black or like whatever our mask color is. And so that requires us to do these cutoff things where we have anything above like a value of one, we're going to set to be white. So that's how you can really easily turn these background removal libraries into masks that you can use for impainting. So thanks, that's all I have for today. Have a great day.